Hello, lovely learners. Welcome back to A Life Learned. I just uh, realized it's been quite a while since I last updated on how my medical therapy has been going. Uh, so, thought I'd share a little. I am still battling pharmacophobia. If uh, you have been following me for a while, you might remember that I made a video about that a couple years ago. I will try to throw it up in the little tab things uh, for anyone who hasn't seen it. Um, but basically, it's I just struggle a lot with uh, the fear of the side effects of medication and so um, getting myself to even start my medical therapy was was quite challenging, it was very difficult. Um, but I managed it um, about a year and a half ago I started an anxiety medication. Um, I'll also try to throw up a reference to the other videos I talked about where I was afraid to start and then I updated on how it was going. Um, so. I did have um, minor side effects, but uh, mostly in my digestion. But for the most part, it went pretty okay. So I got lucky. I was one of the people who didn't have the the worse, worser, the, the the more less less desirable, whatever the the bad side effects. Um, and so I continued with that medication for about I think it was almost a full year when I started to realize that um, it was very effective for my anxiety but I was uh, struggling at times with my depression and it was um, getting serious enough that I felt like I should uh, maybe look into a medical assistance for it um, because one of the main ways that I've always um, battled my depression is through the endorphin rush that you can get being intimate with someone and cuddling or getting a really good long intimate hug from someone um, and so um, for those who followed me on other media you might be aware that even though I talked about breaking up with my ex two years ago we got back together we've, we've been on and off a lot um, and it's mostly because I never felt strong enough to deal with my mental health without that affection um, but I finally got myself uh, to realize, or to, to be strong enough, you could say, built up the strength um, to uh, very amicably break that off last June. Um, and we're still very close, which I appreciate a lot because he's a great guy, but we no longer have that intimacy, obviously. Um, and so <sighs> that has made <laughs> my depression that much harder. Um, so anyway, before that time, um, things were obviously sort of um, becoming more and more difficult. There was reasons we had to break up, right? Um, so for that reason as well, intimacy was dwindling and I was struggling. Um, and I, I really felt like my anxiety had improved a lot. Not, not that it was better or gone, but that I had um, worked on coping skills, um, worked on basically exposure therapy through having to go to school and stuff and taking the medication while doing that. Um, so I felt like I was in a good position um, to focus more on my depression and less on my anxiety. So anyway, I went to my doctor, my psychiatrist, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm struggling a lot with my depression. And she said, okay, well, let's add this to your medical therapy. Um, I can't remember what it was she wanted to add, but she wanted to add something. And I was like, okay. And I took it home and then I put it on my desk and stared at it <laughs> and stared at it. And like, I meant to fill it, finished exams and stared at it. And I, I just couldn't seem to get myself to fill the prescription. I couldn't figure out why. I was just feeling really avoidant about it. I'm not a particularly avoidant person. Um, but I think at times we all get a bit avoidant of things that stress us or cause us anxiety or particularly if it's paranoid level fear. <laughs> so um, after a couple months and my depression getting even worse because I finally truly fully broke up or broke off the, the intimacy with my ex, um, I realized that I couldn't get myself to take that prescription because there was, with the pharmacophobia that I deal with, with all that paranoid fear, um, there was something that had me really scared of, of combining medications and of taking multiple medications. Um, it just didn't seem to be a step I felt able to take. So um, in fighting my depression, it took me a while, but I finally made another appointment um, 
with my psychiatrist and you know you know how it is it always takes like weeks and weeks to get in with them so um I actually made an appointment with her resident student because I was like I'm just trying to get a prescription change like I don't need to see her and I need to get this done soon because I was really wanting to get the transition to happen over the summer instead of having to deal with all the symptoms during class right and it was already um late July when I was trying to make the appointment so didn't get in until like mid-August excuse me and the appointment started with um the resident student trying to convince me and, and like explain to me and logic away all of my issues for why I needed to take this other medication and I was like look <laughs> you don't get it um I can't like I I have made that very clear to myself. I have tried and I can't take two medications at a time. I need one. So um, basically what what I was requesting, what I was saying was, um, you know, I've, I feel like I've done enough work on my anxiety and it's not perfect, but I feel like I can probably manage it now. And although my the medication I was taking at the time um, was, excuse me, I think I've got it written down right here, but it is something that people take both for depression and anxiety, um, but for me in particular, I was using it for anxiety. Escitalopram. Yeah, so anyway, um, so obviously it wasn't having an effect on my depression, so I was like, okay, uh, what I want is to get off that medication and to start something that will be more focused on my depression. And so she walks out and it goes to the my psychiatrist and then pulls me into my psychiatrist's office, which I think is funny because she wasn't supposed to be available, but then she was all of a sudden. And then they both try to start explaining to me, well, you gotta take it, you know, like they, they work together, da 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 da. And I'm like, look, you're a professional, so you should understand <laughs> that when I'm saying that I have pharmacophobia, which is a paranoid fear of the side effects of medication, Paranoia is anxiety-based. Anxiety is not rational. So you can't rationalize this. You can't, like, explain this to me in such a way that I'll be okay with it. That's not how it works. You just need to understand that I'm not okay with it. Um, my psychology doesn't seem to be able to wrap itself around it. And so we need to find another thing. And she's like, well, you can't just take this other medication. I was like, I don't want to just take that other medica medication. I'm saying give me something else, third, entirely. Forget about these two. I want to get off that one and go on something else. It doesn't have to be this one that you've recommended. She's like, oh, okay. So then she comes up with another medication that, um, I can't remember. It's called Effexor, um, is the, the common name. But the actual chemical, the component thing, because they have to go for like a no-name brand, because I'm on assistance, is Fen... Venlafaxin, Venlafaxin, HCL. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it was it was quite the transition too, by the way, because with my other medication, the escitalopram, um, it was just one pill. Uh, I just took a pill every day and it, fine. Um, with this other one, like, and they were just these tiny little white pills. With this other one, they're like these giant capsule pills, and I have to take three every day. Um, and the transition was kind of funny because, um, so they had me half my dosage of acetalopram and then I had to take, like, I had these tinier, littler capsules and I had to take one the first week every day and then two the next week, three the next week, four the next week, and I was taking five of those little capsules on the last week. And then they switched me over to these giant capsules where I take three every day. <laughs> so, um, the transition was a little difficult for me because I was so used to taking one per day that um, I, the first time I was fully on the set of three, I accidentally only took one initially, like out of habit. And then like an hour later, I was like, shit, I was supposed to take three. <laughs> so I made sure to. <clears throat> and I always have to take it with food. And the other one I could just take any which time I like suited me. I didn't have to have it with food. So there's been a bit of a transition, but I do feel like it was the right decision. Um, it was difficult at first. I was dealing with some anxiety attacks, um, some pretty severe ones at times because I was dealing with, you know, stressful situations of traveling or whatever. And I was in the midst of transition between these medications uh, because it took about 
five weeks, I want to say, or six weeks to fully transition. And then there's the body kind of getting used to the new medication. So it was about two months of transition, which meant that it went like a, over a month into my schooling, which sucked. But um, I managed. And other than the extreme anxiety as my body was transitioning, um, I feel like things have calmed down now. And um, I feel, I don't even know how to say it, more alive. I feel more okay. Like things are hard because today's society is not easy when it comes to, you know, the issues with like climate, the climate crisis and stuff like that. It can really mess with one's sense of hope. But um, I don't feel that like literal physical weight on my psyche, on my vision, on my shoulders and my head. Um, I'm able to go through my day and do the things I need to do and to do things I want to do a lot more. So I really feel like it was a good decision. Um, and as you might tell through some of what I just said, I had to fight a bit for it. I had to argue with my doctor. Um, and, and I know that I did the right thing. I knew that of what I knew what I needed they know what they know and they know their generic bullshit um, and so they were just trying to you know run me through the mill like they do we'll just take this med that you know because depression and it's just like no you need to understand that I, I have unique needs and you need to work with me uh, on those needs and fulfilling those needs and so because I was stern about that um, they did and I'm feeling very positive about the outcome so far so yeah it was difficult I'm not gonna say it was easy, um, but it wasn't as hard as when I first started onto anxiety meds. I'd say that transition was way harder, and they did say that that's kind of a thing. Um, and overall, I it, it, the experience, although made me angry with my psychiatrist because she tried to claim that the only reason my anxiety had gotten better is because I was medicated, and I was just like, well, <laughs> with all due respect, fuck you. <laughs> um, I've been working on this very hard, so I'm going to make the decision here because I am the person who makes the decision about my health care, not you. Um, so yeah, she she saw that I was being stern about making my own decisions and, and worked with me. And so I just, I guess, wanted to say that it wasn't the easiest, but it wasn't the hardest either, and um, and it worked out, and I'm feeling very confident about the t transition so far, and um, empowered by the fact that I put my foot down, knew what I wanted, asserted what I wanted, and uh, got what I wanted. Um, I realized I was lucky in that sense of even being able to have medical coverage, um, of course. I. I hate to hear when people can't even access what they need. Um, and in that sense, there was a bit of a mess around because my coverage only covers certain medications, so they had to find a generic one. But anyway, the point more is, um, I do encourage you, if you're someone dealing with depression or anxiety, or if you're someone who's working through healing um, and you begin to feel that you want to address a different part of your mental health, um, take authority in your medical uh, medical therapy and do your research and um, know that you have a right to say what you want to happen with you. Um, of course, it's important to listen to the professionals, but at the same time, they need to listen to you too. You're supposed to be working together. Um, so yeah, it went well. Um, so far, so good. I'll probably offer another update maybe next summer on how I'm feeling about the medication because I'm thinking I might go off medication then, but just kind of going to play it by ear for now. Um, but yeah, please do share below if you've had any experiences with either anxiety medications, um, depression medications, either the ones I mentioned, or transitioning between medications, or had any fights with your doctor about the medications that you, you want to take or you are taking. I can definitely empathize. Um, and I know it's not easy, and I respect that it's not easy, but I do encourage you to take authority in, uh, your, not just medical therapy, but in your medical treatment in general, um, because you know best in a lot of cases, even if you're not a professional, you know what you're feeling, you know what you need. And yeah, please do share below if you have anything relative to share, um, relevant rather <laughs> to add and as always do join me again sometime soon
probably later this week because um, I have to speak at a parole hearing, by the way. Um, so do join me again next week, I guess, where I try again to share a little something I've learned or experienced in life.